Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining me on this video today. I hope everybody's doing fine out there. Something I want to talk to you all about today is why we need to be prepared. This has been an abnormal year for hurricanes. Um, there hasn't been any. And this hasn't happened in, I think they said like 30 years. So we don't need to let our guard down. We don't we need to make, you know, make ourselves think that everything is okay and that, you know, we're going to be fine. Because that's when we get in trouble, right, folks? So this is why we need to be prepping and being prepared for different types of scenarios and situations that can be taking place throughout this country and even throughout this world. No matter where you do live, you all do have what is called a natural disaster that you could be prone for, whether it be floods, mudslides, avalanches, hurricanes, tornadoes, all those different types of scenarios and blizzards and everything else. So what do we have to do? We have to make sure that we are being prepared, that we have the ability, the knowledge, and the supplies to weather these types of natural disasters that we know will happen. It's just a matter of when. It's not like we're trying to predict, you know, anything like a nuclear war, or if we're trying to predict if somebody's going to drop an EMP, or if there's going to be a coronial mass ejection hit us from the sun, or an asteroid just knocks us all out and we're all done. doesn't matter if you're prepared or not. But the weather events that take place in your particular area, wherever you do live, is something that goes on from time to time throughout history. You hear people talk about 100-year floods, 500-year floods. You know, there hasn't been a storm like this in all oh, 50 years. You know, we all go through these things. We all have these things that we have to make sure that we are prepared for. And being prepared is a large, large bubble of preparedness. Obviously, you start off with your food. Your water is your top two little components of the pie. And then you get down to the other components of the pie, which breaks down into your emergency supply kit, your first aid, and that type of stuff. Do you have ways of generating power in an emergency type situation? Do you have a gas generator? If you do, do you have enough gas to run for a while? Do you have battery banks? Do you have solar panels? What is it that you have that is going to supply power for you and your family when there is no power because of the disaster that has just taken place. What happens if one of your family members or something are on some type of a medical equipment and it has to be powered for those people to sustain life? You have to really think outside the box. Maybe some of those pieces of equipment have a small battery bank built into them where they'll run for so long. But what do you do then? See, these are all the questions that you really have to ask yourself so that you can be prepared in a very timely manner because, folks, this is what you are going to have to do to weather these massive storms that roll in. And we all get them. It doesn't matter where you live in this world. You're going to have some type of a natural disaster. It is proven in history. You have a better chance of having one of the above topics that I talked about in the beginning than you do having a, a you know, a coronal mass ejection coming off the sun or, you know, an EMP nuclear war and all this different kind of stuff. All right. Those things we can't predict, period. But the other scenarios, the ones that we can predict, the ones that we know are going to happen to our areas that's going to affect us and our families is what we have to plan for. And that is why it is so critical for everybody to be prepared. Everybody knows what goes on in your area. And if you don't, talk to a local. 
If you just move from one side of the country to the other side of the country or one part of the world to another part of the world or anything else, talk to the local people and find out, hey, what goes on around here for weather? I mean, what am I in for here? You know, if nothing else, go on and Google your area and see what type of weather scenarios are prone to your area. Could be wildfires, could be mudslides, could be floods, could be hurricanes, typhoons. It could be a matter of just about anything. Could even be tidal waves, you know, depending on where you live in this world. The point of this video is being prepared for a natural disaster that you know that's going to affect you. That you know it's going to come knocking on your door eventually. May not hit you this year, may not get you next year, but you don't let your guard down. And so many millions of people do that. They let their guard down, especially in the hurricane prone areas. If they don't get a hurricane for so many years, for whatever reason, all right, people start letting their guard down. They start, you know, forgetting what it was like to go without power for a week, two weeks, for, you know, the whole nine yards because We've seen how FEMA has handled mass problems with a mass of people. They can't do it. So if it's a hurricane or something hits your area and it affects millions of people in your area, because those things can be big and it, you don't have to take the eye to have power outs and trees down, no electricity, no running water. And none of these type of things. And those things can hit anywhere from Texas all the way to the Northeast. It covers a large area of this country. You're talking the whole Gulf Coast and the whole East Coast. And when it goes in, not just the people at the coast get affected by these things. Remember that. Because a lot of people have... This thing that, oh, you know, I'm 50 miles from the coast. I ain't got nothing to worry about. You're in the danger zone. All right. The bigger the storm, the further in the danger goes. Remember this, folks. It's just like when you get heavy rain in the mountains. Water runs downhill. So if you're downhill, you need to have a major plan put in place. So this way here, you can try to avoid being in those floodwaters because they come like a blink of an eye. You'll hear the roar and it's too late. There's nowhere to go. And this is another reason why you never store all your products in one area. This is why you want to make sure that if you are prepping, you do have a backup supply somewhere beside your home or, you know, your friends, other family members. Maybe you got a cabin in the woods. Maybe it's one of those type of deals. But whatever it is, you don't have all your eggs in one basket because that can spell disaster when you really need it. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank all of you for joining me on this video today. I'd like to thank you all for what you do for this channel. And you all stay safe. Keep prepping. Like your life depends on it, because it does. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.